Ali Pierce Scuba. When scuba tanks are made, they are made out of steel or aluminum, or carbon fiber, whatever it happens to be. And, and when they're, they're made, they're made to operate with a, with a very specific uh, uh, pressure, under specific working pressure. So the old steel tanks were 2250, 2250. And then the aluminum tanks came along. And generally speaking, tanks today are 3000 PSI. There are some higher pressure tanks. There's even higher pressure aluminum tanks, but not much higher, but there are higher pressure steel tanks. So 3400 is not uncommon and on it goes. The tank is, it has a working pressure of 3,000. Now, they are also tested to see what their burst pressure is. And you don't want the tank to burst. But at the manufacturing facility, they test the tanks to see what they burst at. So let's, let's make up some, I don't know what pressure they burst at. Let's make up some numbers. 3,000 is a stamped or working pressure. So they fill it with air and they keep filling it up and filling it up and they have it in a big, big safety container and they fill it up to, I don't know, 7,500 PSI. Boom. Okay, so working is 3,000, burst is 7,500. They don't put 7,500 on the tank. You're never going to get the 7,500. They don't want you to even try, but at least they know that that tank is quite safe. Working pressure is 3,000. So now they need to have some safety built into the tank, just in case for some, somehow the pressure gets too high. If the pressure gets too high inside the tank, you don't want the tank to explode. Trust me, you do not want the tank to explode. You do not want the tank to explode. I thought I'd say that twice, just for fun. So the manufacturers say, okay, 3,000 PSI is the working pressure of the aluminum tank. We need to have some kind of a safety built in. So in the valve that fits that tank, let's put in some kind of a safety release, safety relief or release. And uh, uh, you know what, let's call it a burst disc. That's kind of neat, that sounds good. We'll call it a burst disc. And we'll set that burst disc to release the pressure in the tank Higher than the working pressure, but lower than the burst pressure of the tank. So if the pressure climbs too high, poop, the burst disc will pop, the air will come out, everybody is safe. Simple, that's all there is to it. So, what's the burst disc look like? Well, as a matter of fact, it is a disc. Let me show you one. You ready, Kev? Get your zoom camera ready. Ah, got it. See that? It's a little wee disc. It's exactly what it is. Made of brass, and it is very, very carefully, very precisely, I guess is the right word, made. So that this particular disc, when it's inserted into the tank valve, sits there, nothing happens. It just it doesn't do anything, unless the pressure gets too high. That's right. Now these burst discs are actually stamped with a pressure on them, but it's stamped with a working pressure. So this particular one is for, let me see what it says, it's for a 2250 working pressure. So this is a burst disc from one of the older steel tanks that were, had a working pressure of 2250. This will probably, I'm guessing here, this will probably burst at about 3,500 PSI. I'm guessing 35, 37. Now, let me tell you this. Even though these are very precisely made, you can't make them perfect every time. You can't make this burst at 3,721 PSI every time. It doesn't work that way. Metal is not like that, unfortunately. And there's other environmental changes as well that can affect the exact pressure. But at about 30, say we, we've chosen 3,700 as a burst pressure, at about 3,700 PSI, it could be 3,650, 3,670, and so on, this will burst. And when this bursts, the air comes out of the tank, through that little hole, and the tank is safe. Nobody gets hurt. That's the disc. How is it held into the tank? Well, let me show you one. First of all, here is an older tank valve. Now, if you take a look right there, Kevin, maybe you can look right there. Can you see that slot? It's a different color. That's the burst disc for this particular valve. Underneath that burst disc, there's a little plastic seal. Can you see that? I don't want to drop it. Teflon or plastic washer. Okay, that provides the seal. Actually, the burst disc goes in first. Burst disc sits on that, and then there's a, a screw. The screw looks like this. And you see the end of the screw has a hole in it. So this assembly goes like that together, and you, you very carefully put the whole thing into the hole, and you screw it down. There is a specific torque. This is the assembly. These are the parts that you need. It looks like a nuisance, doesn't it? 
It is a nuisance. So now, for new modern ones, they're one piece. It's all built in together. So the burst disc in this case is actually part of the screw of the plug itself. You don't need the plastic ring anymore, and you put it into the hole, you torque it down, and you're done. Two things I need to point out before we go on. First of all, burst disc technology has changed a little wee bit. I don't want either now, one piece, but also, you'll notice that with this particular burst disc in this old valve, the air is going to come out of that hole. Whew. A lot of air. 75, 72 cubic feet, maybe 80. It's a three-quarter inch. It could be 80 cubic feet. And it could be, I'm not sure what burst disc this is in, this could be a 3,000. So you've got 80 cubic feet, 3,000 coming out through that little hole. What's going to happen? Right, the tank's going to tip over. At the very least, it's going to skittle along the floor. If, if not, it'll tip over for sure because all the air is rushing out of that little hole. So they decided a while ago they should change that. And if you look carefully at this one piece again, you'll notice something. Okay, Kevin, can you do this? Uh, as you will do with this one. There's a hole in the end. On the inside, facing the high pressure air, right? But look, there's no hole on the other end. No, there's no hole. Why? Because what they've done, watch. They put three holes around the edges. Yeah. So now when the burst disc pops, the air doesn't go shooting out one hole. It goes out in different directions. And you're much less likely to have the tank pop over. In fact, on the newest, let me show you some of those, Kev. So there's, there's one of those new three-hole burst discs. You see that, Kev? Yep. Now, the very latest valves, it's the same burst disc, three holes, but they put it into a little case in there, a little wall around it. Can you see that, Kevin? And not only protects the burst disc from getting banged, but also even helps to dissipate the air even a little bit more. So that's the most common. So there you go. That's all you need to know about burst discs. Oh, except, do we need them? Yeah, you need them. I'm sorry, that uh, chap, I've forgotten your name, but the chap who said, you don't need burst discs, just put a hex bolt in there, seal it up tight, and away you go. No, <laughs> not a real good idea. Uh, uh, so, burst discs, yeah, great idea. They're cheap. People have asked again on some of my videos, should we replace them regularly? Yes. Manufacturers suggest they be replaced every two years. That's right. Now you have a visual every year. You want to change the burst disc every year? Not a bad idea. If you take an old burst disc out, and I've taken up many of them, you can see how this little brass burst disc that I showed you earlier is perfectly flat. When you put this into a tank and fill it for, with air the first time, it's not flat anymore. No, the pressure actually dimples the brass. It actually makes a dimple in the brass as if it's trying to push out. Well, it is trying to push out. So the burst disc is actually dimpled, actually weakened a little bit on the first fill and on every fill after that. So yes, the burst disc should be changed. Change it every year if you want with your visual, every couple of years, or at the very least have it done for sure on your hydro date, every five years on the hydro date. It's not expensive. 20 or $25 will give you a brand new burst disc installed so you have no problems and you know your tank is safe to use. Anyway, there's some thoughts for me. You share those with your other diving friends. Take a look at your own scuba tank. See what they are. Talk to your local dive store serviceman. See what he says about that and, uh, and see if, I, if they're not some good ideas. Replace the burst disc and it really should be done by a dive store. There's a proper torque for those burst discs so you don't destroy the threads and yet you have it in tight enough. So it only takes a few minutes, 20 bucks and it's done. Anyway, good idea uh, having a burst disc service regularly and a good idea to have a burst disc. I hope there's some information in there and I hope that it answers some of the questions that some of you guys have had about them. All about burst discs. Okay guys, talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips from Aquarius Scuba Center in Toronto.